King Kaumuli'i of Kauai decided to send his son Humehume to America, at least in part to receive a formal education. Kaumuli'i provided Captain Rowan of the Hazard with about seven to eight thousand dollars, an amount the king felt sufficient to cover the cost of the son's passage and the expenses of his education. Humehume was about six years old when he boarded the Hazard that ultimately sailed into Providence, Rhode Island on June 30th, 1805, after a year and a half at sea. Over the next few years, he made his way to Worcester, Massachusetts. Umehume eventually enlisted in the U.S. Navy and was wounded during the War of 1812. After the war ended, he was again thrown upon the world and without any means of obtaining a livelihood or anyone to care for him, ragged, dirty, and in want, he was again enlisted and employed at the Navy Yard in Charleston. Umihumi was discovered and taken under the wing of the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions, the ABCFM. He was sent, along with Opukahaia and other Hawaiian youths, to be educated at the Foreign Mission School at Cornwall, Connecticut. On October 23, 1819, the Pioneer Company of American Protestant Missionaries set sail on the Thaddeus for Hawaii. Two ordained preachers, Hiram and Sybil Bingham and Asa and Lucy Thurston, two teachers, Samuel and Mercy Whitney and Samuel and Mary Ruggles, a doctor, Thomas and Lucia Holman, a printer, Elijah and Maria Loomis, and a farmer, Daniel, Daniel Chamberlain and his family. With the missionaries were four Hawaiian students from the Foreign Mission School, Hopu, Kanui, Honoli'i, and Humehume. They arrived at Kailuakona on April 4, 1820. After the Thaddeus headed to Honolulu, Humehume remained in Kailuakona and took Betty Davis, the half Hawaiian daughter of Isaac Davis as his wife or his rib, as he described her. In a short time, they rejoined the missionary party in Honolulu. May 2nd, 1820 journal entries note, today brothers Whitney and Ruggles have been called to leave our dear little number at Oahu to accompany Humehume to his native isle and to the bosom of his father. It was to us trying to part from our dear brethren and sisters, and especially from the dear companions of our bosom, not knowing when an op opportunity would offer for us to return as vessels rarely sail from Kauai to the Windward Isles. We had a fine breeze, which we expect will take us to Kauai in 24 hours. The Thaddeus left the harbor to touch on Kauai and proceed to the northwest coast, agreeably to our united views. Brothers Whitney and Ruggles sailed with him to introduce him and our business to his father, to interest the chiefs in our object, to survey the island of Kauai, and to return the first favorable opportunity. At 11 o'clock came to anchor at Waimea, opposite the fort, a canoe came off to us with several of the king's men, one of whom could speak English. Humehume had kept himself concealed in the cabin until we told him that one of his father's favorite men was on board, and we thought best that his arrival should be made known to him. We then introduced him to the young prince. He embraced him and kissed him without saying a word and turned around immediately went on deck and into his canoe, telling his companions they must go on shore for the young master had come. Ruggles and Whitney went to Kaumuli's home and Whitney noted, the king and queen were sitting on a sofa by the door, surrounded by a large company of the principal man. The introduction was truly affecting. With an anxious heart and troubling arms, the aged father rose to embrace his long lost son. Both were too much affected to speak. Silence for a few moments persuaded the whole. 
whilst the tears trickling down their sable cheeks spoke the feelings of nature. After the agitation had a little subsided, we were introduced to Kaumuali'i as persons who had left our native country and had come to reside at the islands for the purpose of instructing the natives. He then joined noses with us, the fashion of the country, and said, It is good. I am glad to see you. A table was soon set in very grand style, and we were invited to sit down to dinner. In the eve, a house was prepared for Brethren Ruggles and myself, and we retired much pleasure with this present of usefulness. Ruggles noted that Kaumuli'i told them, I want you stay here and help Humehume, and when vessels come, you and Humehume go on board and trade, so I make you chief. Ruggles responded, I wish not to be a chief, neither could I do any of his public business, but was willing to advise his son and assist him in everything consistent with the object for which we came to his island. He expressed some dis surprise when I told him I wished not to be a chief, but when I explained to him that we, what we wished to do, he appeared satisfied and pleased. This afternoon the king sent to me and requested that I come and read to him in his Bible. I read the first chapter of Genesis and explained to him what I read as well as I could. He listened with strict attention frequently asking pertinent questions, and said, I can't understand it all. I want to know it. You must learn my language fast, and then tell me all. No white man before ever read to me and talk like you. Kapule, King Kamuli's wife, dictated a letter to Nancy Ruggles' mother. She wrote, I am glad your daughter come here. I shall be her mother now, and she be my daughter. I be good to her, give her tapa, give her mat, give her plenty eat. By and by your daughter speak Hawaiian. Then she learn me how to read and write and sew, and talk of that great akua, which the good people of America love. I begin spell little, read come very hard, like stone. You very good, send your daughter great way to teach the Hawaiian. I am very glad I can write you a short letter and tell you that I be good to your daughter. I send you my aloha and tell you I am your friend, Kapule, Queen of Kauai. <laughs>